Wetzler. And I'm Bob Wrestleman. Each week, we focus on the thinking and people behind bright, imaginative ideas. Who's this week's guest, Bob? This week's guest is Kathy Grable, the renowned actress who's going to present her technique about voice, excuse me, person-centric uh, voice acting, which is uh, really impressive to me anyway. But before we do, you have something to do, Heather, right? Yes, I'm going to introduce our wonderful sponsors who you sometimes write for, Bob. Yes, DevOps, DevOps.com is our sponsor this week. DevOps.com is where the world meets DevOps. Ah, thanks. So notice, I want to bring up something before I go into the, the meat of the program, Heather. Notice behind me, I am in NASA mission control. <laughs> That's it. I'm in mass, NASA mission control because today, July 20th, 1969, is when the man landed on the moon. And uh, I remember where I was. I was in camp and I remember what I was doing, which I won't share here, but it was a, what typical <laughs> camp activity is for an adolescent boy. But what I did is we took time out and I actually did go and watch the man land on the moon. And it was actually pretty amazing. When you think about it, it think about it. it don't, here's a fun fact, Heather. It took mankind 10,000 years to put an airplane up in the air. And it only took 63 years after that to put them on the moon. That's what we call acceleration in technology. So i like you to think about that as we celebrate July 20th, 1969, a man on the moon, mission control. Send them up, Buzz. All right. Anyway, <laughs> let's talk about today's guest. Uh, let, me, let me share a, a fact from the past. Uh, Heather, I used to do, and I still do, I do voice narration for uh, technical content. And a while back, I was doing some narration, and I was actually watching a video of myself, and I said, you know, I really need to improve the way I do narration. I tended to stutter a lot. I was uh, even more um, distracted and random than I am today, if that's possible. But I was. And I decided to take a, a voiceover class. And this is because I live in LA. I could go up to Burbank to a place that does nothing but teach voiceover actors how to voiceover act. And I did. And uh, I, in the class, I met a, an instructor who had a very particular technique about how to do voice acting and narration. And the technique was engaging. It really did. It changed the whole way I looked at things. And that a uh, person turned out to be, and is, our today's guest, uh, Kathy Grable, who's also known in some circles as Kathy Perkins. She's a, a renowned actress. She's appeared in a television, and she's appeared on radio, and she's done a lot of voiceover work uh, in general. And one of her most noteworthy roles, and we're going to ask her about this in great detail, is she was the Baskin Robbins spoon. Now, that might not seem like a big deal, but just getting into character to become the Baskin Robbins spoon is an undertaking. And we're going to discuss that. But more importantly, we're going to discuss the, what uh, Kathy calls the person centric approach to voiceover narration. So please Heather, a welcome to Bright Ideas TV, Kathy Grable. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Bob. Hi guys. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm great. I'm so excited to uh, have you on the show because you really, you changed the way I work and that's that good. That's a lot. Great. Thanks, Bob. All right. So, uh, t so tell me about your bright idea, the uh, person-centric approach to voiceover acting. Tell me about it. Well, I could tell from working with other people, coaching and directing, when they were talking generally to me and when they were talking specifically to me. And my background is in theater and musical theater. That's how I was trained. And also in film and TV, which I had done quite a bit of on-camera work as well, you are talking to the other actor. You're listening and reacting. You're looking them in the eye. Um, that's what we learn basic acting classes. But when you're in a voiceover booth um, or the other actor isn't there, sometimes it just is general. There's no specific audience choice. So if you can personalize it and say, who am I talking to right there especially in voiceover, you're gonna be light years ahead because you're not just reading it. Because in voiceover, we have a script, we don't even memorize it, we're reading it. And a lot of people sound like they're reading versus talking to someone. So, so for example, give me an idea. Let's say that I have to do a voiceover for, oh, better, let's be direct. Let's say I have to do a voiceover for the Baskin Robbins Spoon. 
Okay. <laughs> one of my one of my heroes, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I love Baskin Robbins. <laughs> and how would um, and now th- I find it humorous. It's I'm terribly serious through through my laughter. It, it is it is very hard work. I know I've watched people do it. But how 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 do you imagine a person in uh, that situation? I mean, how does it work? Well, if you're doing if you're doing a, a natural character like that, and by the way, when I went into audition for that, I knew I was going into audition for Baskin Robbins. So I could have been like a mom talking to someone, but I went in, it was like, oh, I get to be the talking spoon. So it's a little pink spoon, right? So it's little. So oh, okay, I'm gonna sound little. And it's pink. And one of the first lines was, they're talking to somebody, right? The spoon was down in the ice cream, because you know you can pick all those wonderful flavors. So the spoon was like, pinky to you, ma'am. Right? So it's a little pink voice, and I'm talking to a person. And I think I even went, pinky to you, ma'am. Hey, hey, down here. There was one commercial where I remember it was like a holiday cake or something like that. So it's like, down here. Because, you know, you hear a voice, the person's looking around. No, I'm the little spoon. So that's how I created that. That's, a, that's, a, that's, that's cool. So let's do, let's do a, a real, real world experiment. And I, I asked you to do this beforehand. Let's take a script. And if you have, do you have one on hand, by the way? Yeah, and it's a fairly, I have two things. I have one that would be more of a natural character, but we can start with more of, of a straight read. Right. Which, you were talking about narration. So I have one that's fairly recent that I just got. So this is pretty cold. In voiceover, we don't have a lot of time. Right. In life, sometimes you don't, if you want to apply this, you don't have a lot of time. You, you just need to, to go forward. So um, I'll read it generally and then specifically where I'm talking to a person. Okay, that's sounds fine. good. Okay. So the, you know, I have the copy here and I'm reading... I spend a lot on school supplies, which means I have less to spend on food. And I save on meals my kids love, which means they get their fave snacks, which means they'll do better in class, which means they're happier. Okay, so I was just reading. All right, so now I'm gonna talk to another mom, okay? Because it's like every time I go to buy school supplies, I don't get how it ends up to be like 80 bucks when I'm buying pencils for 59 cents. And I didn't buy that many items. So I'm personalizing it. I'm talking, I, I'm talking to someone I know and I'm saying, hey, I know what you mean. I spend a lot on school supplies, which means I have less to spend on food. But I save on meals my kids love, which means they get their fave snacks, which means they'll do better in class, which means they're happier. Great. So now can you take a, can we do another personality? Who else would you talk to with regard to that script? Okay. So um, you can even talk to your dog. Oh, wait, I have one. Can I, can I make a suggestion? Okay. <laughs> how about, how about, <laughs> how about you're in uh, the Target, right? And you get, uh, you're, you're nabbed by security for shoplifting. Can you okay. do that one? Okay. Yeah. 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 Go for it. Go for it. Come on, guys, I spend a lot on school supplies, which means I have less to spend on food. Wait, 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 just a minute. But I save on meals my kids love, which means they get their fave snacks, which means they'll do better in class, which means they'll be happier. Wow, that's cool. That's cool. What do you think, Heather? That's really great. Yeah. And And I can add to that, but I'm out of breath, okay? Okay, so I've been running all over town, right? Uh Uh-huh. Okay. I spend a lot on school supplies, which means I have less to spend on food with, and I save on meals my kids love, which means they get their fave snacks, which means they'll do better in class, which means they're happier. And I was talking to you, Bob. Oh, yeah. 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 But so. but I had a hectic day. I'm a working mom, you know. All of a sudden, I'm doing this this webinar. I but I had to go buy those school supplies beforehand, right? So I'm a little out of breath. Right. So when do, do specific products lend themselves to particular voices? Well, the great thing is is that I well I personally feel like this that's not our job as actors because we don't know what the advertising company is doing we don't know what what the the product that we're advertising for because we're doing it ahead of time 
So you can get yourself in trouble by saying, oh, we're speaking to this demographic, that demographic, or we uh, feel like they would have, you know, this kind of voice or this. They may have changed their entire campaign. Mm -hmm. It may be that they, they always had a guy doing this car campaign. Guys tend to do car campaigns. Hey, they're asking me to read for this. Mm -hmm. So am I going to sound like, you know, more commanding or what I think their voice sounded like, or am I just going to be myself? Am I going to talk to someone I know because I'm shopping for a car? And that's right. going to make all the difference for, versus me trying to be someone else that might not even be what they want. Right. Right. Because, yeah, I, I mean, I think about it's interesting. Anybody, anybody who's watching the show or even Heather's where what type voice, what type audience is my voice partial to? I, I think about that. I'm, I'm, I have a pretty clear idea of what audience my voice is not partial to. I, I mean, I don't think I'd be terribly successful doing um, selling financial products. I just don't have that gravity. And I can't imagine. I'm trying to think, who would I sell? Uh, who, would, who would I sell that to? I mean, who would I imagine, you know, that the I could sell that to? Is, it, it's such a changing market now. Uh -huh. If you were presented with that, that might be not be something you would say if you were doing a demo it might not be a product you'd say I, I don't know if Bob would do that but if if you came across it they might say in the direction hey we, we don't want your typical financial announcer on this right. we want a non-announcer announcer we want someone who's who's lived life and uh, you know has been in the world of computers I mean you never know and yeah. and ask yourself who would I be talking to mm -hmm. in this scenario uh -huh. even if it's how not one you feel like you'd be right for how do you get involved doing voiceovers that's that's a good question because I'm an actor and so it was just another form of acting mm -hmm. and um, now that I look back because I did a lot of theater I think it's the closest thing to theater in a lot of ways they look to the actor because there isn't style involved with it as much it doesn't matter what you look like you can play a, a talking spoon or you can play an older person um, there so there's not there there's a lot more flexibility with that um, so I think I approached it with actually a very you know, I'm an actor, I can do this kind of thing. And also I'd done a lot of singing and so voice, it made sense. There's something I think inside that they say, hey, let's shave a second off of this where that kind of makes sense to me. I don't know why I can just do it. I think that's my music training. You know, into it. Wow, that's, that, that, that's impressive. And, and you're still doing it. You're, you know, I, I, I remember somebody telling me every year 60,000 actors show up in Los Angeles and something like 59,999 leave, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know, and, and those that remain uh, tend to have made a, tend, made a career out of it. It sounds like you have. It sounds like right. you have. No small thank accomplishment. You. Well, thank you. Thank you. And it's yeah. kind of a niche, you know, a niche thing that people don't always realize is even out there. I mean, you start to listen when you're aware of it. I have a friend who does the bark of a dog you mm -hmm. know for for commercials or there's there's usually voiceover in there some way that you don't always even click with until you realize it's in the commercial yeah yeah i'm, I'm thinking back to i'm thinking more to the the, the, vo the front line narrator i don't even know who he is but right. you'd know him anywhere you know because right. it, it's this is serious there's something happening here right 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 <laughs> So, well, we're coming, we're coming to the end of our time. And I was going to ask you, you know, how, how you got in character to be the Baskin Robin Spoon, but you answered the question much to my satisfaction. Well, I was going to say, I have another one I can throw out if okay. I would pencil, because you said, you know, bring a couple things. So okay. this would be another way to create, because sometimes you think, oh, you're a little animal, you're talking spoon. Uh, okay. So what if they give you a pencil? Right. And uh, your line is, grab onto me and let's make some magic, okay? Uh-huh. And ask yourself, you're like, am I a bright, shiny new pencil and it's the first day of school? I've never been there. I'm so excited. Grab onto me and let's make some magic. <laughs> or am I an old <coughs> pencil with teeth marks and no eraser and I've been around the block a few times, so I'm supposed to say this, but grab onto me and... Let's make some <laughs> magic, <laughs> right? It yeah, that's great. Attitude yeah, versus yeah. just going. I think the pencil would sound like this. 
-hmm. there's nothing behind it. There's not an attitude behind it. Right. Not an audience behind it. Uh -huh. that, that, that's, that's really interesting. Well, well, we've, we've come to the end of our time on Bright Ideas TV this week. Um, next week, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, Jacob Smith uh, from Packet Scheduled. I still have to get a confirmation on his date. We'll be talking to him then. But until then, who are you? Who, you're, you're, who are you, Heather? <laughs> I'm Heather Wetzler, and you've been watching Bright Ideas TV.